you ever heard of don't try this at home? Well, these are some of the ultimate don't try this at home things. We're talking super dangerous military training designed to test the human body to the limit and employed by some of the most badass armies, navies, and air forces all over the world. This kind of thing is not for the rookies, but for the hardened professionals with years of preparation ready to show just how tough they really are. So remember, if you are not a professional, do not try any of this training. Going! Let's go, Going through the sand! Going through the sand! Better than playing in the band! So from the Korean ice water training to the French bomb disposal swimming unit, Here's the 15 most insane military training in the world. <sighs> Number 15. South Korea Special Forces South Korea is ranked as one of the most powerful militaries in the world, with a force of combined active and reserve troops numbering 3,600,000 men and women. Their defense budget spending is the 10th highest in the world, while their overall military power is ranked 6th, ahead of other powerhouses such as the UK, France, Israel, and Germany. This is partially due to the fact that, although an armistice to the extremely violent and bloody Korean War was signed in 1953, no formal peace treaty has ever been signed between North and South Korea, meaning they are technically still at war and tensions remain high. South Korean Special Forces incorporates some intense military arts training for hand-to-hand -hand knife combat as well as this ice-cold plunge into frozen waters where special forces men and women must withstand the shock of freezing conditions, priming their bodies for any possibility should the worst happen and war with the North recommence. Screaming and jumping seems to help things, but these knife-fighting, cold-weather specialists are some real badasses. Before we move on, another quick reminder, none of this training should be tried at home. This is entirely for educational purposes. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or Slenderman will come from under your bed when you're sleeping. Time for the rare topic. Would this list have been complete without at least one mention of the Russians? Obviously not. This is one example of how insane these Slavic super soldiers are, lying on two wooden stools with no back support. This pain resistance training involves two huge bricks placed on the bare torso, which are then set on fire and finally broken in half with a hammer. This training looks tough enough on the guy holding the stools in place, let alone the one receiving the hammer blow and, uh, fiery rocks. How crazy do these guys have to be? As always, comment down below with the hashtag RareTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. Let's move on to the next one. Number 14. Commando Hubert Training the French military has a specialized swimmer unit known as the Commando Hubert Unit, which offers support to both the French Navy and their special forces. It dates back to World War II and was formed of commandos who specialized in amphibious operations. Later, it was based in French Algeria, where it fought against communist rebels and Algerian independence fighters. Now based in Toulon, this special unit has been deployed all over the world, especially in Africa and the Middle East, where the expert divers sweep ships for bombs and defuse them if necessary. These men, and it's only open to men, are elite commandos or outstanding naval personnel, and a selection of around 10 is made every year. To move and um, to overcome. The training is intense and involves all kinds of small-scale water operations, swimming, diving, kayaking, and so on, as well as underwater demolition, engineering, combat, and weapons training, all of the highest order. The unit has its own ship, the Poseidon, which serves as a base of operations. And this super crack unit of swimming experts are among the first to get a call where there's water-based action going down in the world. Number 13. Cobra Gold Training 
Cobra Gold Training is an annual military exercise for nations of the Indo-Pacific held in Thailand and organized by the United States. The first Cobra Gold took place in 1982, and every year, many nations gather either to participate or observe. In recent years, 29 nations have been present, with nine actively participating. The US, Thailand, South Korea, Singapore, Malaysia, Japan, India, Indonesia, and China. Part of the exercise is humanitarian relief, and the US brings provisions to the Thai people, while it is also an opportunity to test new weapons. But the most anticipated part is the jungle survival training. In this training, Royal Thai Marines give U.S. Marines their expertise on foraging for food if trapped in the jungle. This includes learning to identify which plants are edible and which are poisonous, as well as trapping and eating scorpions and geckos, and learning the benefit of drinking snake blood right out of the snake, which can be critical to survive. In the absence of fresh water, snake blood is one of the best ways to remain hydrated. As long as it's not a venomous snake, learning how to skin a pineapple with your teeth, how to capture a gibbon, and that ants are usually filing towards water could just save a marine's life one day. So this training is some of the most useful there is. Number 12. Canadian Forces the Canadian Armed Forces, should they ever have to defend their territory, would not only have to worry about the enemy, but also their own brutal weather, especially if fighting were to take place in northern parts of the country. To be prepared, Canadian troops have to go through a brutal ice water training exercise, which simulates falling into freezing water, as low as minus 30 Celsius, and then being able to rescue yourself from danger. A hole is cut in the ice at Yellowknife on a freezing January day, and the soldiers are having to override every instinct and leap right in. Controlling the shock the body receives is the first and highest priority, and taking deep breaths is what these soldiers are trained to do. Then it's important to try and get out the way you came in. In reality, they need to regain breath control within one minute and then make use of the 10 minutes that the body can withstand such temperatures before shutting down. Once back out, the task is to get into something warm and dry within an hour. Otherwise, hypothermia can set in. After the ice bath, these troops learn about constructing igloos and other extreme cold survival techniques. Number 11. Japanese Ground Self-Defense Force after defeat in the Second World War, the Japanese military was severely restricted as the country made moves away from the long-standing martial culture which had shaped it over many centuries. The Japanese army is in fact known as the Japanese Ground Self-Defense Force, strictly emphasizing defense over any kind of active operation. Under the wing of the USA for much of the Cold War, the Japanese maintained a small military to counter any Soviet threat, with Russian-Japanese tensions a feature of the entire 20th century. The decline of the Soviet threat after the fall of the USSR led to the emergence of new tensions with China. This time the Japanese felt like they needed to take matters into their own hands, and slow but steady rearmament has seen Japan rise from military puppet to once again being considered a mighty military power, ranked fifth in the world at global firepower. Japan has taken to rearmament like a duck to water, and the training is as rigorous and meticulous as you might expect. Ties with the US and a new closeness with the UK have also strengthened Japan, and British soldiers became the first non-American troops to train on Japan in history in 2018. Japan has begun to make its presence felt once more, and the fantastically trained soldiers in its army are a force to be reckoned with. Number 10. Taiwan Marine Corps Speaking of countries worried about China, the Republic of China, otherwise known as Taiwan, is not taking any chances either. Taiwan has a huge navy and an impressive military for such a small country, and their marines are extremely highly trained. They are expected to complete a grueling 10-week training course, which ends with something called the Road to Heaven. The marine must fall from standing to a plank position, landing on his elbows in rough sand. Then he must immediately begin crawling on elbows and knees across jagged rocks, shouting, I do not fear pain, as they go. Oh, <laughs> 
Along the way, they stop and must perform rolls, sit-ups, and other exercises, while instructors pour salt water onto their wounds to keep them clean. And stinging like crazy, the reward, a hug from their families, and elevation to the highest elite in the Taiwanese Navy that of Frogman. If they fail, however, they are sent back to the beginning to do it all over again, making sure they get it right on the second go. Number 9. Indian Army Commando Training Right above Japan in the world of military rankings is India, in fourth place. And it looks like they aren't slowing down, as their military spending vies with Saudi Arabia for third place. So this is one nation that will go from strength to strength. Major political disputes with Pakistan and China, as well as serious internal unrest, means that Indian soldiers have their work cut out. In spite of all the advancements in equipment being made, this mighty military puts its commandos through some of the toughest endurance tests on Earth to ensure they are in tip-top fighting conditions. The idea is not only to promote physical toughness, but mental strength and the confidence to face any crisis. The battle obstacle course consists of four endurance runs of increasing length, 10, 20, 30, and 40 kilometers, all undertaken with a 60-pound battle pack on their backs. That final 40 kilometers, that's a marathon-length run, and considered one of the most brutal of all military training programs. Here we make men out of boys, says the sign over the camp, and they are not joking. Number 8. Russia's Spetsnaz Incredibly, in spite of a military budget which is only one-tenth of the USA and a fifth of that of China, as well as a GDP smaller than Italy and a population smaller than Bangladesh, Russia remains the second greatest military power in the world. And that's before we talk about their massive nuclear arsenal, the only nation who even the Americans cannot take for granted. The question is, how do they do it? One of the reasons might be the Spetsnaz, which is the general term for all Russian special forces, operating in any branch of the military. The training the Spetsnaz go through is surely the most intense in the world. They are taught how to kill with spades, wrestle maddened dogs to death, and crawl through basements covered in blood. Western special forces sniff at the Spetsnaz, considering them unsophisticated and made up of one-third conscripts. But they should laugh at their peril. These are some of the toughest men on Earth, and have been through psychological and physical training that would be illegal in most Western countries. And the brutality can even be effective. They learn Sambo, an all-in street fighting technique, and have no fear in close quarters combat, or killing with their bare hands if necessary. Russia's strategy of non-linear warfare relies heavily on the incredible abilities of their special forces, who are the product of truly insane training. Number 7. Paramilitary Police Training in China All the nervousness in Taiwan and Japan is not for nothing. China's resurgence in the last 20 years earns its regular spot as one of the world's military superpowers and has been through serious investment and some truly insane training. The People's Liberation Army, which is China's primary army, is the largest in the world, with some 2.3 million soldiers. One auxiliary branch is the paramilitary police, who are soldiers tasked with enforcing strict law and order at home. And these are some of the most highly trained units in in the whole country. They must crawl through flaming obstacle courses, submit to chokeholds and remain conscious, and hold their heads underwater for minutes to practice for any situation. They abseil down buildings face first, crawl half-naked through the snow, and practice intense forms of martial arts, often in muddy pools or snow. Anti-terrorism drills and intense physical and psychological training are crucial parts of the training, and they are kept in ideal condition. With the world's most populous country to police, there's always plenty to keep them busy. Number 6. Pararescue U.S. Air Force 
The United States Air Force Pararescue are special air command operators, often known as the PJs. Their origins begin back in the early 1920s, when it became clear a special unit to rescue stranded airmen would be required. It wasn't until after World War II, though, that the Pararescue Squadron would be formed. Through the Korean and Vietnam Wars, the Pararescue men became indispensable. rescuing countless stranded airmen, and they were awarded Air Force Crosses at a rate far higher than their numbers would have expected. Such is the level of bravery expected of these rescue pilots. Part of their reputation comes from their training program at what is known as Superman School. At two years, it's the longest special operations training in the world, and only 20% make it through this grueling test. They are expected to perform 20 hours of non-stop physical training, and then finish up wearing a water-filled mask while making 1,000 flutter kicks in the water. They can learn survival, water rescue, parachuting, and extensive medical skills, as well as mountain engineering and advanced combat techniques. The pararescue teams are some of the most respected and admired of all the forces, especially as for many combat troops, their courage and skill may one day be the only hope of making it out of a hellish situation alive. Number 5. U.S. Army Special Forces The U.S. spends so much money on its army, more than 10 times as much as the world's second biggest superpower, Russia, that it can afford a whole variety of crazy training for its various special forces operators. Army Special Forces training is designed to be tough, and without those who don't have what it takes to join the elite. These soldiers are expected to run a lot and fast, and carrying a full kit bag on their backs. The unprepared can suffer shin splints, foot damage, and lung problems, as this training is designed to push the limits of the human body. Find my reconnaissance, terrain intelligence, and target weather in the joint arena. Being on your feet all day with not one moment to sit, as well as a serious amount of heavy lifting, means soldiers need a lot of lower back. Furthermore, it's required that candidates be strong swimmers, able to swim 50 meters with boots and a pack on. The Green Berets, as they are known, are famous all over the world and have been involved in countless major operations, ranging from major wars to counter neurotics to humanitarian operations, not to mention showing up in popular culture such as the classic film Rambo and the classic video game Metal Gear Solid, both of which feature a rogue Green Beret with a badass approach to getting the job done. Number 4. U.S. Navy SEALs not to be outdone by the Army, the U.S. Navy has its own special forces, the U.S. Navy SEALs, with their own extremely grueling training methods. The SEALs are expected to get into the hottest part of a war zone, gather intel, perform rescues, and destroy targets, and then get out again before the enemy ever had any idea they were there. Such efficiency requires serious training. And at the end of a four-week basic conditioning program, SEALs candidates have to go through something called Hell Week. It's during this week that commanders can separate those who are going to make it and those who have what they call fire in the gut. Five days and five nights straight, with no more than four hours sleep in total, they are sent out with their rubber Zodiac boats over their heads and are constantly facing challenges. Freezing temperatures and being constantly soaking wet are minor inconveniences. They must run and crawl and swing their way through Hell Week. The important aspect is that they remain able to pay attention and listen to orders even when the brain is turning to mush from lack of sleep. Those that do will be rewarded, while any who can't concentrate will find themselves being sent back home. Number 3. Recon Marines the United States Marine Corps Force, Reconnaissance, or Force Recon, are special forces whose main job is the gathering of intelligence. This can be through deep reconnaissance or through direct action, and often involves operating behind enemy lines and using unconventional warfare, operating independently, all as a support of more conventional warfare. Similar to the Green Berets and the Navy SEALs, they use a variety of methods of insertion into the combat zone.
whether by air, land, or water, and they must be able to adapt to all possible conditions. Sometimes what has been planned as a green operation or deep reconnaissance requiring evasion, disguise, and light defensive weapons can suddenly turn hot and become a black operation, requiring direct action, and the force recon needs the skills to turn from one to the other in an instant. The candidates must go through a vigorous training program with the motto, fight as you train, train as you fight guiding them to put 100% into their training. Communications, weapons, vehicle and shipboarding skills are learned, but also things vital in humanitarian operations as well as science and explosives. This is one intense training program that requires both brawn and brains. Number 2. Ranger School the U.S. Army Ranger School is open to all servicemen and women in the main branches of the U.S. Armed Forces. Soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines, as well as military students from certain allied countries, it is a 62-day course which concentrates on tactics and leadership skills best suited in units who engage in close combat and open fire battles. Beginning in 1950, graduates are permitted to wear a Ranger badge on their uniform on completion of the course. They are given a scenario, fighting the fictional Aragon Liberation Front, a terrorist group. Over the two months, they will face the enemy in different scenarios. First up at base camp, where 60% drop out in the first three days due to the intense exercise regime expected. Then it's on to the mountain phase, followed by the swamp phase and desert phase. At the end of it, graduated rangers often describe the experience as putting them in the worst shape of their lives. The constant flight or fight stress response, trench foot, weight loss, dehydration, sleep deprivation, heat stroke, chillblains, frostbite, cuts, insect bites, fractures, and tears all add up to a brutal experience. Deaths have occurred during training, as the idea is to push students as close to death as possible, but sometimes the push is too far. Number 1. North Korean Special Forces in North Korea, it's fair to say that things work a little differently to everywhere else. The standards and basic legal rights expected by most soldiers in the world don't always apply in North Korea. And in a country where the military is everything, the training for their special forces is especially insane. It's estimated there are as many as 200,000 North Korean special forces, and they have been recently developing more high-tech elite units known as Lightning Commandos, designed specifically specifically to counter U.S. Navy SEALs in combat. They are without a doubt one of the leading special forces in the world, and their basic training consists of an introductory 24 weeks followed by 18 months of guerrilla warfare training where they learn about VIP kidnapping, counterinsurgency, assassination techniques, psychological warfare, explosives, forgery, and communications. The importance of guerrilla warfare is enormous in North Korea, and any powers, whether South Korea or the USA, who think they could invade Pyongyang and convert them to capitalism should be prepared for decades of endless, fanatical warfare by highly trained and very numerous special forces. Their presence likely enough to keep North Korea safe for now. Well, that and the nukes, I guess. Do you think you could withstand any of these training regimes? Who's the most badass and insane country on this list? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!